Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing a review on this palette right here. This is the Lolita Povida palette by KVD Vegan Beauty. I was lucky enough to get this for Christmas and I have been playing with it more or less every day since. So I feel like I'm in a good position to kind of talk about it, tell you how I feel. I've also got it on my eyes today as per. And yeah, I just thought it'd be a good time for me to talk about it, round up my feels, and also do a bunch of swatches as well, just so that you can really get to know the palette as well. Anyway, so let's get going. Here is what it looks like inside. So there are three slash four different types of formulas within this palette. So there is mattes, there are shimmers, and then they have these, these three here, these ones with like the super halos on. There is foils and there is uber glitters. The two foils are Dolce Suenos and Luna. And then Reina here is that uber glitter, which is like super duper shiny. Um, and But these kind of have, I guess like the base of the formula is similar. So it's nine matte, six shimmers and three uber duper super special colors as well. So 18 in total. I got this from Boots. Well, I didn't get this from Boots, but my family member did get this from Boots. Thank you very much. So yeah, so we've got a whole, whole host, a whole selection of different finishes within this pack. Now what I want to do is, before I continue to talk about it and do swatches and all that fun stuff, is I want to flip it this way. And the reason is, is I think the colour families become a lot more clear when you sort of stack it up like this. So at the top here, we've got these kind of like oranges, sort of like warm tones, then we've got more of a neutral sort of section, and then the bottom six are this cranberry purpley sort of family. And I think when I initially got the palette and when I sort of saw it online, what I liked the colours, um, maybe purples aren't always necessarily my thing, but like I really like these colours, like the oranges, they definitely are right up my street. Um, I was kind of trying to figure out how to like bring looks together with it because you know, 18 pounds, that's a lot, that's a lot of shadow. I, after I sort of realised, well these colours all kind of go together, these colours all kind of go together and these ones do, bonk, kind of give it a 90 degree angle and I think it becomes a lot more clearer how to build eyeshadow looks from it. By all means, you can dot around and do whatever you like. So it's almost like having three six pan palettes all in one. I feel like I'm like jumping around everywhere, but this is cardboard, it comes with a mirror, pretty standard packaging, but like it's pretty easy to fold. But yeah, so I definitely think this is a great way to look at it. If you're thinking, where do I go from here? How do I do this? So what I'm gonna do now is gonna zoom you right on in so you can have a good old look at the palette, give it a good old swatch so you can really get up close and personal with each and every shade. Okie dokie guys, here is the palette all up close and personal. Definitely have a little pause if you wanna have a little look-see uh, up nice and close to all the shades together. But we're gonna flip the palette to that 90 degree angle and we're gonna start at what I would argue is the top, my favorite section, which is the oranges. So kicking off the swatch fest, we're going for one of the shimmer shades. This is Preciosa, which is a more lighter champagne-y colour, but it definitely is a little bit more lemony, so it definitely works within this orange family. Next up, we've got La Lupe, which is a more medium-toned, rich matte orange. I knew I would love this colour from the absolute get-go. And then finally, we have Amorcito, which is a more neutral, erring on the side of uh, warm, mid-tone brown. I would like to apologize for my poor swashing ability here with Amorcito, but I do actually really love this as a transitional shade. So next up we have Saurisa. This is a brilliant, so unique shade. So it has a base of orange, but the glitter in it is this duochrome green color. So unique and honestly, absolute underdog best shadow in this palette in my opinion then next up we have one of those foil shades so this is the Dolce Suenos so this is that orange rich color really really nice really good and goes really well with the rest of the colors of this part of the palette and then last we have Sylvia which is a matte color it's kind of similar to Preciosa but it definitely is a little bit deeper and a little bit more peachy but it's still that bone color do not fret I have also made sure that you've got a nice little image of these all together all in focus I think this color family is honestly right up my street really really beautiful warm shades that go so well together we're then going to slide this palette on up into the central more neutral section so first up for this section we have got Monica. this is a grayish almost lavendery muted tone it's definitely one of the more cooler shades within this palette then next up we've got enamorada which is a, a deeper color uh, it's still got a bit of pink to it but it is still quite a light matte shade and then also another matte in this section we've got Juanita which is a more chocolate brown. So moving on over we have the shimmer shade Cruise. I feel like it's more Monica's counterpart 
uh, it's definitely got sort of that grayish slate almost deeper shimmer shade then next up we have Raina, which is that super glitter slap bang in the middle again it's got a little bit of a pinky hue but it's largely sort of a silvery chunky glitter and then we have destino which is a shimmer shade and it is also a little bit more subtle than the other ones um, but it's still super duper hard to pick up on my milky white skin Last but by no means least, we are looking at the more cranberry and purple section of this palette. Romantico is Sal Reese's purple counterpart. It definitely has a vibrant season, bright, vibrant purple with shimmer in it. Then we have Esperanza, which is arguably the complete opposite because this creamy matte color just melts into my skin. You can't see that it's there. And then we also have Rosario, which is a really lovely color. It's this rich, shimmery, cranberry shade. Carino is a more rich matte purple color. It's definitely got that oxblood vibe. Great for a liner. And then the last of those foil colors, we've got Luna, which is more of a neutral tone, but again, it definitely is that more pinky undertone. And then the namesake color, we have Lolita Porvida, which is a matte cranberry color, which works really well alongside Rosario. And here they are all together, a really nice, as you can see, those colors really do work well as a nice little color family. So what do I think of the formula itself? So I find all three slash four formulas that are in here are really, really good. I really do enjoy them. I have always enjoyed KVD shadows. So um, what I love is, by the way, it's also vegan and cruelty free, which is, you know, totally my vibe. Um, but what I really like about them is they are pigmented enough, but they're also really blendable. I find that sometimes shadows that are like pure pigment, they don't really blend that great. Whereas these I find it's like a good mix of like blendability, really easy to work with, but you don't have to use a whole whole load. In fact, today I've got La Lupe on and I just dip dip with my brush. They work well. I find them really, really functional for everyone. I, I, th I think it is a really good universal formula that they have going on. Um, you know, the mattes I think are nice and creamy and opaque, but like blend out easily. I think the shimmery shades really like pack a punch. And then also, you know, if you really want to go wild, I find that like, these shadows here are almost a really good way to, if you have like a base look, that you create with this palette and then you want to amp it up for whatever reason, you can really play with these. I mean, even the two foil shades sort of at either end, you could definitely have both of those on your eyes at the same time. What I will say specifically about the foils, and I guess the, the uber glitter as well, is I find by the end of the day, if you don't have anything on underneath, so let's say over here we've got Luna, which is the foil, and we've got Esperanza, which is next to it, which is sort of a more pinky bone color. I would find if you didn't have like a base color underneath it by the end of the day yeah it would start to wear yes there'd still be some glitter there but sort of the color behind it would have faded a little bit i found that particularly with dolce suenos because i wanted to try that just on its own by itself and i found by the end of the day whilst there was still orange glitter on there the sort of base color had gone away so i definitely think adding la lupe underneath would have been you know, my next step if I wanted really like longevity of the shadow. They do stick around until the end of the day. I do find that they do very much hang on, stay around for, you know, I mean, listen, I've been wearing them in quarantine. So have I had them on for 24 hours? No, but I have had them on for a good 12 and they're still very much there. Maybe not as bright as they were when I initially applied them, but that's gonna happen, you know? I'm very happy with the longevity of each of the formulas that is in this palette. And yeah, as I said, I find them blendable, really easy to use, really comfortable, uh, really functional. I'm a really big fan of this palette. As I said, I think initially when I first got it, I was a bit more, not confused, but I was like, where do I go from here? What do we do? I, you know, like, yeah, I'm gonna love this. Um, I'm gonna love La Lupe. I knew that from the get go, but I actually found from going this way and playing about with each section, really handy in sort of A, experimenting. It's been really fun to, play with looks that maybe not necessarily I would have put on in, you know, day-to-day -day normal life. But yeah, I think it's been really fun for me to just kind of like play around. So why I like this palette, it is neutral enough. Like to me, these are neutral shades, you know, they're not bright green, they're not bright yellow, you know, they're not rainbow colors, but they have an interest to them. And that's 
completely and utterly up my street. For me, I love what I refer to as alternative neutrals because there are loads of palettes, like dare I say, you know, your Urban Decay, Naked palettes, what have you, which are a dime a dozen. And whilst, you know, they have a place and they are functional and they're great, good job, well done. I, I want something that's a little bit more interesting. Even, you know, say like these two colors here, um, Amosito and Sylvia, these not interesting colors, but then when you add them in with, you know, some oranges, some cranberries, you can definitely still wear this every single day. This is a palette that you can use every single day. It can be definitely more neutral, it can be definitely more subdued, but then also the color choices, I think are really clever because they do have that little bit more intrigue. They do have that little bit more interest to them. So I definitely think that's what attracted me to the palette because to me, this is a neutral palette and it has, you know, a purple glitter in it. I definitely think this is also a really great starting palette for somebody because as I said, like, yeah, you can get a bunch of like brown neutral palettes, which is cool, man. But I think this is definitely for somebody who wants a bit more spicy makeup. I think this is a really good starting position and something that you will continue to get use out of, whether you're trying to do like, you know, your Saturday night look or your Monday morning look. I think it's all it's all encapsulated right here, particularly because they do have these fun shades as well. I think, you know, it, it covers the bases with, with the matte shades and even the shimmer shades, but then adds a little bit of fun with the glitters as well, if you wanna, you know, church it up. Another thing that I really like about this palette, which I think adds to its functionality, is a lot of the shimmer shades correspond with a matte shade, which I think is so clever, particularly Again, if you are just wanting something that's simple and easy or new to makeup, the, the colors work so well together. So the one that I wanna share with you is what is on my eyes today and that is La Lupe and Sao Risa. Sao Risa is the underdog of this palette. I completely and utterly was dismissed this shade when I first got it, but I it's my favorite shade in the entire palette. I love it. <laughs> I can't say enough good things about it. But yeah, so La Lupe and Sao Risa, what I'll do, is I will swatch them next to one another. So if you can, this is this is an angle, but if you can see here, they have the same core base. Like I would say Sao Risa would have a bit of the matte or the, the color of La Lupe in it. So they work so harmoniously together. And it's not just these two, this is the two that I like sort of discovered. I'm like, wow, they really do work together. I think it, it's true through all the colour families. So um, Lolita Porvida and Rosario, very similar like cranberry shades that work really, really well together. So I like to put like a matte colour through my crease and then if I do want to put a little bit of shimmer in, which usually it's not always a given, but Sarisa I've been wearing every day. Like, hang on if I get up close. So I've got it on my eyes today where I've got La Lupe through my crease and then what I've done is I've tapped Sarisa on the sort of outer half of my eye and it just works so well together they really sort of come together as a, a look and then i added a bit of this sort of like citrine sort of shimmery shade as well for just the inner corners uh, but as i said i think it's true throughout the entire palette you can definitely quite easily match up a matte color and a shimmer color which just makes making looks really easy i find and super duper fun by the way if, if you would like to see a video of me putting looks together and using this palette. I wanted to do a video reviewing it because I, I do often do, when I talk about eyeshadow palettes, I do videos where I do like several days in a row wearing it, but those videos can be like half an hour long. So I'm trying to make this one a little bit more succinct and just sort of review it. But if you would like to see like five looks from this palette or whatever, I'm more than happy to put that together. In conclusion, I think this is, I'm, I'm just singing this palette's praises. I can't think of anything bad about it. As I said, yeah, towards the end of the day, after 12 hours, the shadows are starting to fade. But when they fade, they fade together. It's not like blotchy. It doesn't like have you have like one like really like vibrant bit of color and then there's everything else gone. I find that they fade gracefully. If, oh my God, I just realized I didn't take my vitamins yesterday. I really do think this is a solid palette all around. And also I think it's something that's really important for KVD's lineup because, you know, they are known for having more brighter, more vibrant, more full coverage colors. Whereas something like this is still alternative. It is still a bit more edgy, but it is functional. It is day appropriate. It is easy to use, fun to use, functional to use. So I really, really like this palette. 
I am so glad that it came into my life and I'm gonna continue using and loving it. Um, oh, I did wanna say, probably should have said this at the beginning, how I do my eyeshadow. <laughs> so for full transparency, I do always use an eyeshadow primer. The one I'm currently using and have used with this one is the Beauty Bay Eye Base. This is not my favorite one, but it's, it's the one that I'm using at the moment. And I also set my eyeshadow base with a powder as well. I find that for me, that works well and I didn't want to use this palette not doing that for the sake of it because that's not how I do my eyeshadow so full transparency I did use an eyeshadow base with this throughout but that's how I like to wear my makeup anyway um if you do have any questions about this palette I don't know I just feel like I've spoken for 15 minutes telling you how much I love it so if you do have any questions please do not hesitate to get in contact um and as I said if you do want to see a video of me trying it out more on my eyes not a problem let me know and I can do that for you anyway thank you so much for watching and I shall see you again soon. Bye!